So I go meet this girl at her place, right? And we were gonna go out, but she said we need to wait on her babysitter to show up so someone can watch her five-year-old daughter, right? When I first get to the neighborhood, I realized it's a gated community in North Dallas. So I'm like, oh, okay. So I had to text her to get the code and everything. So I'm like, damn, seems like a nice area. Surely nothing goes on wild here, right? So as I'm pulling up to her house, I notice that her front lawn is cut diagonal. You know what I mean? It's not cut in a straight line. So I'm like, oh, okay. It's cut like a golf course. This is this is nice, real nice. You know what I mean? So I pull right into the driveway and I park right there. But that right there is already breaking rule number 34-1 in the Baby Mama Shuffle Safety Handbook. You never park right in the driveway. You're going to find out why in just a second. Before I get out the car, I grab my tool bag and I grab my hard hat. But I'm not there to fix anything. Once you get to a level I am of doing the baby mama shuffle, you realize that a lot of these girls, they don't like their kids to see that they're casually dating. You know what I mean? So it helps them if you show up as like a, as a handyman, show up as a, a direct TV guy or this. Me, I got all the polos. I got the vest. I got the hard hats. So I got it all because I've learned over time. If you cater to these women, it helps your situation in the end. This, this is what I do. Hell, I'll even show up as an astronaut if she needs them to. You know what I mean? Just, just put it in the appointment notes. So I'm sitting on the couch just chilling, right? I'm eating one of her kids' fruit snacks. She has a PS5 on the like on this big flat screen. So I'm like, oh hell yeah. And the sitter should be there any minute. Everything's going great, right? Then out of nowhere, I hear boo, 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 boo. Sound like LAPD at the front door. She jumps up and looks at me like I was suspecting company. Like, nah, girl, this your house. Who the hell is that? And I wasn't really scared until she got up and she went to the door and she looked through the window thing on the right side. And when she turned around, the face she had looking at me looked like pure fear. Like, like we, like she shouldn't have been there either. I'm like, whoa, like what's going on? She's like, you need to get up, get your stuff. You need to go to the pantry right now. I'm like, the pantry? She's like, get up, get your stuff and go hide in the pantry. So I, I wasn't going to let her say it three times. So I got up, I got all my, my stuff and I go hide in the kitchen pantry. And I was sitting there next to a box of Ritz. I, I, I remember specifically. So while I was sitting in that pantry, I, I didn't know what was going on, right? But later I found out, you know, like just to add information in right now, that her babysitter had to cancel. But she called her ex-husband instead, instead of calling her because she had like no clue that they were even going through a split, right? So he showed up to pick up the kids, but he saw my car in the driveway. You know what I mean? That's why there's rules to this. You always park across the street. You park down the road. You never park in the driveway. That's how you get yourself hurt. So I'm sitting in this pantry. I'm hugging my little tool bag and my hard hat. And I'm like trying like to breathe like real quiet. And then I overhear like them yelling like blah, blah. Like it's like, it's like real muffled. But then I hear like a slap, like a loud, bah. And then she goes, and you still hit like and I'm like, oh, oh. They squabbing, they squabbing. So I'm like, okay, do I do I get out the pantry and go like do something, or do I sit here and you know let this family matter go on? You know what I mean? And then I started hearing glass breaking and all kinds of stuff. So I'm like, okay, I'm not gonna sit in here while there's like full play is going on. So I get up, I walk around like little the little kitchen short hallway thing, and then when I see him, my whole mind kind of changed, and I wish I was still in that pantry because he was this big, buff, no neck Vin Diesel cornbread and hot sauce and beans for breakfast and i didn't really know what to do so i was like hey yo and then as soon as he heard me he turned and looked at me and he started walking my way and he was like cussing and everything already and then she saw that he was coming towards me so she like ran and kind of like intercepted you know his path i guess she was trying to save my life right but as soon as like she got in front of me he picked her up like a toddler like underneath the armpits he picked her up and chunked her i'm talking like almost 10 feet into the couch and the couch like flipped over so i'm like okay and then when my my adrenaline is pumping and i'm mad i start to sound like my mom for no reason so i was like hey so uh, what you what you're not gonna do is just throw people and but before i can get the word around before i can get the word around out of my mouth i'm up off the ground you know what i mean and he throws me and i remember i did one half spin and i saw like the kitchen, and then I was on the diamond table, like, and then I hit the this little dog cage, and then I hit the, the tile floor, and I thought I was dead, and I kind of laid there, and I, I'm not going to lie, I knew I wasn't dead, but I played dead, because I didn't want no more of what that got going on, that was a family matter, I shouldn't even say anything, and part of me was trying to make myself feel better for laying there acting dead, you know what I mean, because I was like, you know what, he threw her into a couch, you know what I mean, he threw me into a dining room table, so he still loves her. You know what I'm saying? She got thrown into a couch. So let me just, you know, lay here. And Because he didn't ask me who I was. He didn't say, what are you doing here? He immediately picked me up and threw me. He didn't want to have no conversations with me. So I'm just going to lay there and chill out. 
So eventually she started yelling, I called the cops, the cops are on the way. And then the cops did show up, but he was already gone by then. So when the cops showed up, of course, they asked me questions, they asked her questions. I told the cops I got a few in, which was a bold face lie. I did not get one. Hey, what's up, y'all? So I want to thank y'all so much for tapping in with me. And as you saw in the clip, I did show y'all that's actually a comedian. And he was talking about his own experience dating a single mom, or at least trying to. So he said that he pulled up to the house and she lived in a good neighborhood, probably because that was where she and her ex-husband lived at together. And now they decided to divorce. So now she's living there. And the husband is probably bitter at this point. So he pulled up, was there for a while, chilling with the girl. And then all of a sudden, the ex-husband decided to pull up. And what he said was the husband, he was heated. And this, you're gonna take into consideration when you date a single mom because there's a big chance that there's going to be a lot of baggage and when the man comes to to pick up the kids you're going to be there and he probably going to have some slick things to say to you and the mom so personally i have no problems with dating a single mom but you got to realize that a lot of baggage will come with it so if you decide to date a girl make sure that if she has a home, make sure to not park your car at her home because if she has a man, he will be able to tell that she actually have someone inside the house. So, I want to know what y'all think about this. Make sure to leave a comment, like this video, subscribe, and watch next videos. I got for y'all.